since probably about April, April or May-ish, we've had a few unique calls for service that have come out. Most haven't hit the media, but we're going to cover some safety tips to go over this and then some other things to look for um, as the summer heats up. i got to play the video, sorry. <laughs> I make it so serious on all of them. Uh, should we should turn the headlights off a little bit to the scene, or have you got them off? The video? That's a good idea. Maybe not. I was just thinking maybe that. Is it video up here? No. Yeah, we're still. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I showed that during your last video. Yeah. Uh, and the reason I show that is. is it's funny. <laughs> it's also a good thing to kind of remind ourselves that not everyone is a victim because of uh, where they are or who they are. Is this, do you want this on or off? Let's go back on. Yeah. Okay. I think I only have one more video, but I think it plays by itself, so I won't even run that. Bit. But the point of it is, is sometimes you get in a bad spot where you can't get away. You know, the people that are involved in criminal activity and become victims, that's one thing, but that's what everyone kind of sees, sees these days, but there's also a lot of innocent people that get hurt too. One thing I do amongst uh, some of my duties is teaching the academy, and I think I went over this with your bank robbery or active shooter or both trainings, and we try to instill this upon people. It's the crime triangle, and this is a criminal or a crime. So a criminal's ability and a criminal's desire are very hard to control. People have tried millions of different methods and theories and all this stuff, but really in reality, it's short term and it's not really effective. So as far as the criminal's ability, incarceration, treatment, education, desire is kind of one of those things you hope they grow up and mature. The one thing that we can't control as a society, as a police department, as everyone else is opportunity. So I know it's a little dark here, but it says eliminate the opportunity and you can avoid the crime. So for several years, most of my crafts went work a night shift or, or second shift. So about anywhere from 2.30 in the afternoon until midnight and also 7 at night until 7 in the morning. So one of the things I used to do is if you live in Northwest Lincoln, I would drive around and I would go to the homes in the area that would leave their garage doors open. And I would come wake you up at 3 in the morning and let you know your garage door is open. And uh, I know it startled people, it kind of made them scared, but there's people that walk right in the house. So when I started back in 2000, when I used to work uh, kind of later nights, kids would go in the garages and still beer out of the fridge, you know, kids thing, that's not a big deal. Now kids go in the houses, and they, they go into the house and steal your purse, they'll steal your laptops, they'll steal your guns. Um, we had a group of uh, Sudanese males that were running around Northwest Lincoln that were breaking, that were going into houses and stealing guns, cars, taking the keys off the, the rack and taking the car out for a ride. Um, and going to Walmart at 3 a.m. and buying about three, four thousand dollars worth of TVs and electronics um, and going until those credit cards were maxed out. So it's changed a lot and that's kind of one of the things we need to hit on people's heads is now it gets warmer out, we tend to be outside more as the evening goes, but we also tend to leave our garage doors open. And as you arrive at work, try to remember to park close to a building or in a well-lit area. If, if you if you're not required to park, or if you're required to park away from the building, park somewhere near a light. So one of my jobs is, is Crime Stoppers, and I do a lot of putting stuff on the website, going on the media and talking about it, but we, were, we as a department review tons and tons of video surveillance video. And one thing we found is, and it's kind of common sense, is criminals don't like to be seen online. So some of these videos, we have an evidence I can't show you, but you know people have a home camera and they have a motion light. It's amazing they'll leave their car in the driveway. As soon as someone walks by and that motion light goes on, you see someone take off running the opposite direction. So it's kind of a one thing criminals don't like to be seen in light because they know that someone may be recording them and therefore they can be caught. So it's a great deterrent because if you park close to a light, um, look in the parking lot upon arrival. If you see something that's suspicious or not right. Don't ignore it. Uh, we had um, recently a call uh, where a person pulled into a uh, uh, an area or to a business and found a car parked right out front. Thought it was weird. Ignored it. Walked in and then called us later. Ends up being the person was passed out. Um, they were drunk. 
from the night before with the domestic with the wife and uh, nothing too big, but they were robbed probably, their business was robbed, a victim of a robbery, I think it was, within a few weeks after that. So that kind of alerted them that, hey, maybe uh, this isn't something we should take you know, for granted that when you see something like this, make sure you, you don't just ignore it, walk by it, as everyone did. And finding out later that this car had been parked there pretty much every morning for the prior two weeks. Husband would come home from work, get upset, drink, um, and the wife would kick him out of the house and he'd just go about three blocks and park in a bank park, or not a bank, uh, some kind of business shopping mall, a little mini mall area and park there and just pass it off. So, hey man, I have a question. Um, uh, Homeflake, mm -hmm. where recently they've had, you know, some incidents where somebody was raped when they were jogging. Or, yeah, there was a bike trail right there. Yeah, okay, so um, that, the other day I was driving down 70th Street and I got a phone call and I thought I can't concentrate so I'm going to go into a parking lot sure. in Homeflake. And I was on the phone and I looked around and there's a lot of people that are in their cars just sitting there. At night? Well, it was it was like four o'clock. Oh, okay. But is that what are they doing? Are they? Well, <laughs> some people. I was just like, I don't know if your mom and dad talked to you about this yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as a as a third shift like, officer, when you're in the park after night, there's usually one of about three things going on. <laughs> <laughs> one of them involves drugs. The other two are we can kind of figure out on our own. But um, I was the other, just I was stunned that I. Looked around, I was on the phone, and there was like two other there cars are. in that lot, and they were just there's only one person in there. And I thought, they went into a drug deal, or it are they? Be. That park is pretty infamous, though. They have a lot of uh, I know uh, fitness groups are going there. I know like the Star City Stroller Moms have been meeting there on certain mornings because I'd go out there and talk to them. And there was a group of like 20 cars <laughs> going into this one more lot. Like, What's going on today? And it's them. So some of them meet out there. It's, Different, I know different fitness instructors and stuff have been meeting, having people meet at Pioneers and Holmes Lake because it's a big park. They can go running on the bike trails and stuff like that. Maybe people that just want to go out for a jog because the weather's nice. Um, but when I was on the phone, there were other cars. It wasn't like they were waiting. It, it didn't look like there was going to be like a boot camp like you had. Sure. So I don't know. I got out of there. I, I said, I, I, had never, idea. I was scared. It was during the day. Sorry, I just wanted to know. No, you know, in that incident, in that instance, I should say, if you think something's going on, that's when you call us and we come out and check it out. And usually what happens is we'll come out by the time we get there. Some of them are gone, some of them are still there. And it kind of sends a message that I had a neighborhood watch meeting last night with a group. They have a park in their area where the same thing's kind of going on, although there's no lights. And I told them, if you call the police, then the people know that someone's watching that park, and they know that that's not a place to go do things that you shouldn't be doing in your property. Catch me up, so. Okay. Got it. Okay, anything else? Um, here's a good one that we've had recently come up. If you encounter a vehicle loitering in a parking lot, AKA driving around a parking lot, sitting in the lot, especially outside of bank for a couple hours. Uh, I, would, I was in TIU, Technical Investigation Unit, for three years, and I helped work bank robberies. And I helped work the bank robbery at the Union Bank at 20th and Highway 2, uh, down there, I think it was about 2012. And uh, one thing we found through our investigation, the guy had been sitting in the lot for a while running surveillance, his own surveillance. Um, and we found that, uh, you know, through that investigation, another one, he would, he would literally have he, he and his group would basically run surveillance on banks for at least a week or two prior before robbing. So they would know everyone's plates, they would know everyone's cars, they would know what people look like, they would know who opens, who closes, stuff like that. So kind of a good thing to remind yourself, if you see something in the lot, that's a small parking lot over there. After we worked it and started getting more information on it, that was one thing that some of the people in there noticed, you know, this car's been kind of acting weird, it's been here, it's been, Back up over here, there's not really a, a complex nearby. They thought it was a daycare. The daycare had nothing, didn't know anything about it. So kind of a thing you want to look for. Um, I always encourage people to walk to and out, to and from work. You gotta walk from your car in and out with a friend or coworker just to make yourself 
less of a target. Uh, criminals tend to attack people one on one or two on one, not two on two. So if you walk out with a coworker, they kind of know that, okay, someone, if I grab one, someone will probably call the police. So a good thing to think about. Um, big one that we've just recently had a bunch of larceny from autos. While you're at work, lock your vehicle up, throw up your windows. I know it gets hot. You can leave a crack. Don't leave it halfway down, as some of the cases are. Um, remove all valuables from inside the vehicle. Uh, we had a lady I put up on Crime Stopper. She went to work at a retail store, a 70 year old woman, and had her purse with about 15 credit cards in the front passenger seat waiting there because she didn't have a place to store it at work. Eight hours later, she comes outside, her windows broke out and her purse is gone, and several thousands upon thousands of dollars have been used on her credit card. So, good thing, removed from inside the vehicle. I always tell people, put it in your trunk. Um, one thing I would encourage though, is don't pull it into a parking lot, get out, pop your trunk, and throw it in there, and then walk inside for eight hours. There are people that sit back in parking lots, uh, especially the bigger parking lots, and they'll see people do that, and then they know which car to go break the window out and pop the trunk. So, if you're gonna drive somewhere, you're gonna work for eight hours, Throw it in your trunk. Um, if you're going to store something in your trunk, throw it in your trunk before you get there, and then that way you're not seen as a target. Or take it inside and lock it up. Another huge one, uh, notice someone hanging around a business or loitering nearby, contact us. One of my job duties is business watch. We had a business I went out and did a security survey on. They had an open dock door where um, as a heat comes on, they open the door and leave it open pretty much. Well, they're having problems where, if you can believe it or not, people coming in there that didn't work there and were stealing metal off the property because they were scrapping. And um, it was a place that basically uh, made metal parts. So they were walking out with little pieces of metal at a time, not drawing attention to themselves. Well, they were concerned because they started noticing some things missing, and then they started noticing people, more and more people hanging on the property because once word gets out that you have an open garage door or something like that, and not one person just knows about it, there's going to be several. So uh, that's a good thing to remind yourself is, you know, you see someone hanging out there that shouldn't be on your property. I know it's a little bit harder here, but uh, you see cars that are hanging out, people loitering on the property, and even during business hours, contact us and we come out and talk to them, see what they're doing. Hey, man, I was just going to say, with all the roofing activity right now, like our street, you have a lot of people getting new roofs, yep. a lot of employees. We should definitely keep things locked up. I agree. Just because they're... I know this is going to come as a surprise, but some of those roofing companies don't hire the most quality human beings always. <laughs> Surprisingly, we have construction going on at the police station, and, and I can tell you right now that uh, most of the people when I walk to and from my car are people I've seen before. Yeah. It's not from church. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and it's quite awkward. So they will hire people that are, you know, prone to do uh, burglaries and thefts because they need a job and they can pay them. You know, so most of the times the people are good people. But there's a small percentage of those that, you know, now the roofing, the, the remodeling of the houses and stuff like that are kicking in with all the damage. You have to be very careful, especially of your house. But if you do notice damage to a building, such as broken windows, doors, this is one that probably doesn't pertain much to you guys, but we've got businesses that get windows and stuff broken out and they leave them out. And then, you know, they come back, come in one day and they find a you know, guy sleeping in their property because it's hot outside. Someone climbs through a window. Or they, uh, the door is broke so now people are going in and out of the door, you know, after hours. Big one I see a lot of is finding a secure spot of to hide your purse, wallet, keys, other valuables iPhones, droids, whatever kind of nice cell phone you have are worth a lot of money these days, tablets, all that stuff. Um, we have a group that usually works from the East Coast to the West Coast and back through. They will send in groups of four or five people and one will distract, a couple will distract people while the other ones go through offices. And they will find this stuff sitting out. I work at a hospital off duty. A couple years ago when I was in TIU, we had a uh, group of people that were working hospitals, they would basically go up on the floors and they'd walk through the locker rooms where the nurses would store their purses. And uh, unfortunately, the nurses didn't want to keep typing in their code or swiping their badge and get in their locker, so they just brought the door open. And someone walked in there and took several purses out, and you know, nurses work 12-hour shifts, 
So within 12 hours, someone can bring up quite a bit of money on your credit card. So, and check notes, as you guys know too. So um, it's, it's not a good thing to just leave stuff sitting out. Um, if you encounter someone you know, in a, you do not know in a work area, greet them, ask them what they're doing. Why are they, why, can I help you with something? Why are you here? Uh, so that way you kind of send a message that this is our area, you're not allowed in here, and that tends to scoot someone out. I was at a women's clinic a couple weeks ago. They had a guy walking around their offices at an OGBYN or whatever they're called clinic, and he was there by himself, which, you know, was <laughs> common sense again. And they found him in an office, they're like, what are you here? And he's like, oh, I'm waiting on my girlfriend. What's your, your girlfriend's name? He couldn't remember his girlfriend's name. <laughs> so on and so on. They never called the police. Oh so this God. guy's walking around their office for about 30 minutes, going in between the offices. He tells the next lady he's going to the bathroom, and he's going in the bathroom, and then she leaves and goes to another office. So on and so on. So they had some items come up missing. Um, by the time they called us a couple days later, obviously this guy walked out pretty easily free on that. So. A little common sense, um, stuff like that. So you see someone wandering through an office that doesn't belong there. That should be a clue. You know, confront them and ask them what they're doing there. And then if they're up to something they should be, they tend to get out pretty quick and you can call us. This is a big one that we get, especially in the summertime. Uh, consider who's around when you're engaging in conversation, especially about your personal, personal life, going on trips. Uh, younger people tend to post everything on social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. And they'll be, hey, I'm in Europe, I'm in here, I'm in Texas, whatever, and they, they have them drinking at a bar, eating at a restaurant. Well, believe it or not, there are criminals that can track you on Facebook. Just like cops track criminals on Facebook, there are criminals that track normal people on Facebook. So what they can do is, you know, we had a big case last summer. Grandparents go on a vacation. Kid, uh, grandson, has some, you know, buddies that aren't, you know, the most upstanding people. Friends with them on Facebook, see grandma and grandpa out of town. Couple clicks on the internet, figure out where grandma and grandpa live at. Grandma and grandpa come home two weeks later to find their house completely ransacked. Hundreds of thousands of dollars taken out of their house. Twin electronics, jewelry, cash, you name it. So this is stuff that was easily, not, I couldn't say easily avoided, but when you start posting stuff that you're gonna be gone for three weeks, how hard is it for a, a group of guys to show up to a house or women and uh, act like you belong and go in the house and hang out for an hour or two, take everything out you need and wait for, wait for a little bit and leave. So, um, but also when you start talking in front of people, you know, um, customers and stuff that don't know you, and you don't know them and, hey, is Becky working today? No, Becky's on vacation for a couple more weeks. She's, gonna, she's in LA, you know, God bless her. All stuff, the customer knows who Becky is and can go right to that house. So just remember that. Um, a few little tips there. Um, this is one I put up here mainly for the robbery I worked with. The guy was doing a lot of surveillance. He, he could tell me on his logs who was opening and closing each day, what day of the week they opened and closed the business, the bank. Little things like that. And granted, it may not be a huge deal, but when he knows that this guy opens it up at this time, and he knows for 12 minutes that the next employee doesn't come in, gives him a pretty good time frame for when he can rob, be one-on-one -on -one with someone as opposed to having six, seven, eight people inside the business. As I mentioned earlier, loitering. Uh, don't always rely on people's cell phones, at least in the banks, you guys have lots of lands on, landlines. Mr. Burley was robbing grocery stores and gas stations last year. He would take all the employees' cell phones, because they're mostly teenagers, younger age kids, like 20s, in their early 20s. Half of them didn't even know what a landline was. And uh, one of them, they robbed a store and took all their phones. They had to drive in a car down the street to a gas station called 911. So, um, you know, little things like that. Uh, just don't always rely on your cell phone. And as I mentioned earlier, now this you can barely see. It's a Platte Canyon, 2006. Does anyone know what that means? So when I'm talking about suspicious behavior, um, one of the things I teach, and you guys have probably been through, is my active shooter class. I just took another active shooter class in February. The gentleman there was involved in three active shooter events. He's a sheriff's sergeant out in Colorado, outside Denver. And one of the shootings he talks about is this Black Canyon. So this man, 50-year-old man, 55-year-old man, I think, parks in a school parking lot, waits for um, a police officer to leave the school on a call for service. He goes in, 
uh, walks through the school for about 38 minutes. So he's in the school walking through each classroom, not just peeking his head in, but opening the door, looking for the girl that he likes. Kind of fell in love with a young girl that worked in a coffee shop and uh, found her in one of the last classrooms, takes the classroom hostage, and they have about a six hour standoff where he ends up killing the girl and himself. Um, it's kind of a nightmare, but when we start, when they started doing an investigation, found this guy to walk around the school, you know, wearing jeans and a t-shirt, 55 year old man walking around the school, not one person notified the principal, another teacher, called the police, nothing. They just thought, well, what's, what's the big deal? Well, those big deals turn out to be something bad. So, kind of a thing to remember. Little things like that can maybe make a big difference. So, if you are confronted at work, maybe a robbery or, a, or some kind of a theft, uh, comply. Don't worry about trying to keep any cash. Treat all firearms as real firearms. Um, and if you become a victim, do what it takes to get away. <clears throat> statistics show don't get into a vehicle with someone if you are taken hostage. Your statistics of survival are pretty low. So, um, focus your brain power on memorizing a physical description. When we call, when you call the police, or when we show up, we're going to ask you good questions. A lot of it's going to be how do you find or what's a person look like? Anything that stands out? High weight, scars, marks, tattoos, hair color. Um, any unique clothing they're wearing, anything like that can really help. And it'll start to see a vehicle description, license plate. Um, you know, shoes are, seem to be the big thing. A lot of people, kids are wearing those Air Force or Air Jordan 13s, whatever they are, the throwback Air Jordans. Those can kind of help on cases. We've had robberies where people have worn weird jeans. Uh, the CVS pharmacy got robbed a couple of years, well, about a year and a half ago, where the guy was wearing women's designer yeah. jeans. Remember that story? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, that helped clear a case. I don't remember if I showed you guys this in the first one. I've changed these up a little bit. Does anyone want to guess which one of these guns are real? The reason I show this to you also is I looked on CNN today at a, a local Chinese restaurant, and not local, but Chicago got robbed, and a, a lady thought the gun was real fake and grabbed it. And uh, she took it away from the guy. They, they ended up catching the guy, and she picks up the gun and fires around and her, her business almost hit her husband. Playing around with the gun, thinking it was a toy gun that it wasn't. So, some of these guns are, some of these are fake, and some of these are real. They're gonna be hard to see, but basically every gun here on the left is fake, and every gun on the right is real. So, this one looks pretty real to me. And I just don't want people interpreting guns as uh, that they're always fake. So, um, for men, carry your wallets in your inside pocket or your front pocket, inside pocket of a coat. Easier for um, you to protect yourself so in case someone brushes up against you and tries to take your wallet out. Um, also, if someone reaches in your front pocket of your pants, I'll help you figure out something right. Um, <laughs> uh, for women, zip up your purses, uh, keep them close to your body. And turn the flap inside in so no way it's not flapping out. People don't reach in your purse, which has already happened a couple times this summer. Uh, leaving purses and wallets behind. You set your wallet up to pay for something. Gas station, grocery store, you walk out the door. Um, or you uh, leave your purse on the same thing. Restroom floor seems to be the, uh, the newer one. People set their purse down to go potty. Someone reaches through and grabs it, and they're out the door. So. Um, don't leave, as I mentioned earlier, don't leave any valuables out. Uh, big one, lock break rooms and office doors. So if you're, if you're, if you're going to be gone for a day and you have an office, lock your doors so that way it's not open if someone comes in. Some people can disguise themselves as cleaning people, stuff like that, and they can easily get in the doors. When you leave work, have your keys in your hands. You approach your car, look for anything that appears out of place. For example, if you have a um, you go out to your car and you see the car's about a half inch or a couple inches open, dome lights on. Probably good signs won't broke into your car. Don't just walk up to the car and jump in it. Call us. Let us come check it out. Make sure there's no one hiding in there. Um, if there is someone loitering out in the parking lot by cars, or uh, my favorite is the guy that walks through the entire parking lot and checks the door handles to see which doors are unlocked and no one calls until finally someone like driving by sees it. Um, call us. Um, if they're checking door handles, they're only up to one thing. So that's when we can come out and talk to them. Maybe we can't make an arrest at that time, but we can at least identify who the person is. 
And a uh, big one that we see a lot of is getting your, when you look, get in your car, check the back seat. Some people will hide in the back seat of cars if they're, especially trying to get away from a, a call or a scene. They'll hide in the back seat, thinking that they hide back there, no one will see them. I always tell people, kind of look underneath your car too, if you see. Um, for a while, we had people that were cutting man, um, one of those things on the manifolds or something like that underneath that they were scrapping a, a yards for 100 bucks a pop. So they climb underneath the car in a parking lot and just start cutting them. When I went downtown, they parking lots. tell people too is know how to use it and hold it because I'm mine. When I go to use mine, I know that I'm pointing at the right direction. Yeah. Because the way mine's set up. We've had people that go to pull it out and they end up spraying themselves. I mean, it has, well I've got it at home now, but it has this whole thing where you have to have it spray pointed away from you. Oh okay. like that's that. good. And know that you know the stream doesn't always come out like the movies <laughs> and stuff yeah. like the fog. They uh they can if you haven't used it for a while, they can dip down and stuff. So just know where it, it goes. Um, at night, try to stay on well-lit streets. Don't walk down alleys or, or uh, areas where there's no lighting. Um, walk with a friend or run with a friend. I see a lot of people out jogging these time of days and nights and at all times. Three, four o'clock in the morning. When I worked third shift, I'd see people out jogging at three o'clock in the morning because they just got off work. Uh, let people know where you're going and when you plan on being back. So if you're going to be gone for an hour, tell your significant other, your kids, whatever, hey, I'm going to be back in an hour, I'm running, I'm going for a job. So four hours later when you still have to come home, they can call us and we can go looking for you. Uh, change your routine. This is a thing that I think we're all victim, victims of our own uh, routines because we park in the same spots. We go drive the same streets, we, you know, leave at the same times. And sometimes the criminals know that too. So they know when you're leaving, they know where you run, they know where you walk, they know where you park. Biking, I'll cover real quick. We've had some pretty bad bike accidents this summer already, and it's only June what, 10th, I think it is. Wear a helmet, uh, walk through, walk your bike through a crosswalk. Uh, make sure you have lights on the front and rear of your bike and use them. Don't wait till nighttime to leave them off. Um, people get hit that way. Big one I see is a lot of people riding through a crosswalk and people can't see them and they, they run them over or they almost hit them. Um, I like when people wear helmets because that way at least you've got some protection in your head. Um, basic hand signals so you don't just turn in front of someone who doesn't know what you're pointing to. And the big one that kids seem to be getting onto this better than adults is riding on the right side of the road. So, when I was grew up, people used to tell us always riding with traffic. So you're riding against traffic so that way they can see. And actually, statistics show the way your eyesight is set up when you're driving is that you look more to your right because we drive on the right side of the road. So if, you, if your kid comes this way or a person comes this way to your left, you might not see him. But if you're coming up and you see someone always on your right before you see someone coming at you. So especially as you get in parts of Lincoln, which are hilly. How about running? Just, I, I jog in some, every now and then, like, very tough sidewalks, and yeah. I, I always do the opposite side, you know. Yeah, and traffic, I, right? I agree with you. When I go jogging outside, um, I, I like to know when a car is coming at me, but the statistics show it's better to ride on the, run on the right side of the road because someone behind you can see a lot easier than someone coming at you. Now, sometimes that's not always an option. So I guess if you're going to jog, don't jog in the street. In that regard, jog on maybe the grass or the sidewalk. Um, a couple more things we'll cover real quick. At home, lock your doors and windows. Draw shades at night. Um, there's a lot of people that look in people's windows that they don't even know they're doing it. Um, if you're going to leave for a little bit, or if you're going to be home alone, I always tell people to leave a few lights on. Makes it look like there's more people at home. Don't open the door for strangers. Uh, I don't know how many calls we work a year where people just open the door and invite people in that they don't know. They think, oh, they're stopped by to sell something, or, and they're not. Um, big one that we see a lot of burglaries on, repair people. Um, they act like a repair person. Hey, I'm here with LES. Uh, I've got to check an um, electrical line. 
They don't have any LES equipment on, no LES vehicle, no uniform, nothing. And then a couple hours later, these people's houses are broken into. Uh, this is mainly for the younger people, but don't have people hanging out in your house you don't know. No one mom or dad or not at home. But also as adults, we let people hang out in our houses. Maybe our kids, we invite kids over that we don't know. Then bad things happen from there. Um, be careful when, okay, I've already talked about that. The reason I show the ID, LES, Water Department, Lincoln Water System, Black Hills Energy, all those companies wear their badges. So they'll show you, hey, I'm, you know, I'm Jane Smith with, uh, you know, Black Hills Energy. I'm here for a gas line. Here it is. And they'll, you'll see a vehicle out there. As opposed to a guy pulls up in an 83 Honda that's barely running and he comes in and says he works for a company. That's not, never a good thing. Um, one thing we see a lot of too last year, uh, advertising our belongings, not only online, but uh, you buy a brand new TV and you set your 70 inch box out on the curb, not breaking it down, and then you go to work and someone kicks you in the door and takes out your brand new 70 inch TV because they see the box sitting on the curb. So, um, this apartment complexes, they do a lot better job of this than they used to. Uh, put your first initial on the box, mailbox, or maybe just part of your last name as opposed to putting your full name and phone number. Um, I know some of them do that, I don't understand why. Uh, we've had a few assaults in the last couple of years from laundry rooms and apartment complexes. Uh, well, I always tell people too, if you, when you go to do your laundry in an apartment complex, Lock your apartment door so someone doesn't know you're down in the laundry room and they come up and have free reign of your apartment. We changed a few phone numbers around um, with the 911 center. Obviously, emergency is still 911. People always ask me, well, would I call 911 or do I call the non emergency number? If it's an emergency or a crime in progress, you call 911. That's how it goes. You're never going to get chastised if you call 911 because you don't know which one you should call. Um, and uh, what you will get chastised is when you call 911 to ask for the time of tip, <laughs> the weather, um, try to hit on the dispatchers, that's never a good thing. Uh, if, if there's no immediate danger, you know, your car got broken into overnight, there's no one around, you can call the non emergency number. That number has not changed, it's still 441 Um But let's say you want to call to speak to the officer who worked the case, but you don't have, uh, you can't remember his phone number. The new number has changed to 4418105. So it used to be 7204, which still rings to the same eight part of the department, but I don't know if they transfer those calls over now. So we've combined the two couple of uh, parts of the, uh, the city police department down there. So 4418105 will transfer to any eight, uh, officer or uh, um, desk that you need to go to. So. And if you can't remember that, just the 6,000 number will do the same thing. Um, but if you do call in about a call, 911 or 6,000, hey, I think there might be a fight going on outside, I can't see anything, stuff like that. Know that a lot of people complain to me about the house of dispatcher, asking like 15 questions and blah, 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 blah. Well, in today's world, the way that lawsuits get thrown out and people get hurt and stuff, we, they have, they're required to ask so many questions and ask certain questions so that way you don't just as a police officer I get sent to uh, possibly two people fighting outside of Union Bank you know there's people moving around at all times you know you need to know that okay is there any description are they near a vehicle have they left where are they at you know they're going to ask you questions it kind of annoys people but they're just kind of doing their job um, if you do become a victim of a crime notify us immediately a lot of people say, oh, my car got broken into, but they didn't take it. Well, still call us so we can take a report, because that way we can track it. Maybe there's more cars in the area that have been hit, but we weren't aware of that. And then we know which area of town maybe they're, they're getting targeted a little bit more. Um, as I mentioned earlier, pretty good description if you got one. The new thing that we started last year and a half, year, year and a half ago, is the anonymous sexual assault reports um, that people can do. Uh, and uh, you can uh, do it online, you can do it at a hospital. Uh, and one thing we try to tell people, and a lot of people don't know this, is don't wash, if you are a victim, don't wash any, or bathe, wash any of your clothing or anything like that. There's probably some good evidence. And um, the sexual 
uh, saw anonymously. So we don't have to leave a name or anything like that. We just tag in the evidence and see what's, where it goes from there. Any questions about that? It's kind of a new way to get more um, updated statistics when it comes to a lot of crimes. This is a video I'll show you. It's the last thing I'll show you. It's kind of a funny thing. Does anyone remember this video? I don't remember if I showed it. Okay, this is from Houston, Texas. Um, oh, yes. Go to the city. That's great. Uh, with a, uh, a school board was having issues where kids were bringing guns into schools, and believe it or not. They didn't want to put metal detectors up. They didn't want to basically act, do a lot of things that people were asking them to do. So the school board came up with a solution of basically the simple of having kids tuck in their shirts and wear a belt in school. Um, a lot of parents complained, said, you know, a lot of reasons that's not going to work. Um, and said you can't really hide a gun um, in pants like they show on the TVs and movies. This is an off-duty police officer who showed you over there. a weapon and makes it difficult to identify intruders on campus. A dress code can reduce weapons violations, relieve tensions between gangs, reduce disciplinary infractions, and generally improve the atmosphere of the school. Our policy requires that students tuck in their shirts making the belt line visible at all times. Our students may not wear baggy pants or colors and insignias that are commonly associated with gang activity. This policy was a collaborative effort between the parents, teachers, and administrators in this community. So those are all weapons that were pulled off of him. He took off of this person. That kind of is a good reminder to everyone that, you know, no matter where you work at, where you shop at, there may be someone like this walking around. Um, and kind of a good thing to remind yourself that. You know, I just tell people, if you think you see a guy or a gal that looks like they may have a gun tucked in their waist, and I have a video I can't get to play um, of a shooting in Detroit. A woman wore a dress, like a little dress, and she basically um, had a uh, holster strapped to her leg. So it looked like it was part of her hip. And she got mad at another lady, and she pulled her gun out of her holster and fired into the car. Um, and you wouldn't even, you know, watching the video, you couldn't even tell she had a gun control on her, and, and the, on her leg. Mm -hmm. um, so, kind of a good thing to remind yourself if you think that there's probably a, someone with a gun, there may be. So, I know that by state law, the CCW law says they can't come into banks. Um, with that, um, I'm, I'm going to tell you that there's a lot of fight to get them to carry it all anywhere they want. So, as time goes on, who knows what's going to happen. I was hoping they get it fixed this session, but they didn't, so. Hey Matt, I was just gonna share with the group about what happened to me. Maybe you were still at the bank, maybe when I was there. My, I had an office on the first floor, and every day I came in, I put my purse in the lower left drawer, yeah. and was working away all the time, and no big deal, and one day I got up to go to the bathroom, which was only, like, I'm here to go to the bathroom, came back and there was a loan analyst there saying, Jenna, I saw this man come right into your office. He went right to your drawer, took out your wallet. I was right there at the door and he, he was so big that I got scared and he walked past. Meanwhile, there was a disturbance up where some of the loan people were with some women and their kids and they were distracting the employees while he was robbing me. And you guys, I got them. They were a gang. Yeah. And they used my all my cards, my wallet, at, uh, everywhere in like an hour. But I was so glad you guys were right on it. We caught them. And that, and that's the groups of people that come through town quite a bit. Yeah. And they'll, they, they will do that. They'll send a group of people to draw attention to their yeah. cause of disturbance. And then the other one goes out and starts stealing stuff. Um, that's the way it kind of works. Or, because everyone's looking over here at the disturbance, so we'll watch behind and get some blue in the office. They were stupid because that was right there when we had a lot of police in the building. Yeah, they were kind of, yeah. But there were women and Maybe kids that were up front at decoys, but, you know, getting some of our other employees distracted. So, but the slow name was this guy that walked in front of us and identified it, but it was a game. And guess what I had my wallet, my kids' social security cards, you know, all that stuff. Don't do that. <laughs> well, you'll see uh, the evolution of 
it's a totally different mindset. But the evolution of gangs these days have gotten, a lot of the bigger gangs are getting away from the drug dealing and the guns and they're moving more to white collar crime. Because you make more money, you get lesser sentences, and uh, it's easier to get away with. Well, the police said that this guy, that he, he, I guess they've been watching him come into work, or because he knew he went right to the drawer like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, horrible. And where your bank offices are set up and windows are open, people can look at it all day long. So, you know, when you when you are in your office and when you're not. Yeah. Any other questions or anything I can answer? Falsely accused, like you think something's going on, you call the cops, they come. Can those people come back on you for false accusation or whatever you want to say? You know, you know um, anymore it seems like you can get sued for anything. I know. Um, and so, I mean, to be honest with you, uh, you have a right, you know, to defend yourself, but you also have a right to. Uh, protect your property and, and yourself. So, I mean, if you feel that someone's going through a parking lot checking door handles and maybe someone else saw it too, what we would come out is talk to them say, hey, we're going to call about you hanging out in the parking lot. What are you doing to these cars? You know, if the person gets upset, and a lot of times we won't tell the person who calls, okay? Now, if we would make an arrest on it, your name or business could go in the report, okay? Because it's required by the city attorney, county attorneys, defense attorneys. Um, so in the long run they could, but if you get arrested for it, I don't think you really have the right to sue. And I don't think you'll find too many attorneys. But there are people that are scam artists that go out there and they basically kind of put themselves in that spot so they do become victims of it. And woe is me, I got picked on. Um, it works both ways and I understand. I can understand both sides of it, but a lot of times our department handles it to the point where they'll yell at us and they may file a complaint on us, but it's part of the game that we we have to do it. I mean, we can't ignore if someone's walking to a parking lot that shouldn't be there. I mean, that's why I always encourage people to put up signs, no more here to trespass in any lot. So when someone does complain, say, well, see that sign right there? It says no trespass. I mean, you're not here. You don't bank here. So what are you doing in the property? Well, I'm going to go out and get a walk. Well, who, who are you meeting? Um, I was just going to walk in the door. Okay. Let's go in. Oh, well, uh, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, a lot of times, the way you talk, that they tend to figure out that you know what they're up to when they move on. Can you be later? I guess. I don't know. I've been a victim, or I should say victim. I've been involved in lawsuits where they were pretty stupid. But, you know, I got sued by an inmate when I was in investigations because I ruined his reputation. <laughs> when he was on work release doing frauds and scams to a bank, through a bank with a bunch of other inmates. And they were taking cash and going to the casino. He sued me because I ruined his reputation. So uh, obviously that didn't make it anywhere in the lawsuit, but you know, anymore you get sued for anything. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Um, my niece was involved in a car accident and I was close to where she was at and she called me and she told me she thought the guy was on his cell phone because she could see him looking down. Sure. So the officer was there already and I said, well she thinks he was texting. And he says, well, I can't ask the guy for his cell phone, but you can. So in front of the officer, we asked the guy to see his cell phone, and he had to show it to us to see if he was texting. Yeah. So we, I don't think people know that you can, and maybe that's not a good idea, but. It, it works both, once again, it works both ways. Um, you know, we can't direct him to show the cell phone. We can't but, search a cell phone like that. But if i got three witnesses to say, hey, this guy's on his phone, I'll ask right. him, hey, will you have your phone? Well, can I look at it to verify that? They tell me no, you know, I'll put that in the report. Uh, if the victim says, hey, can I look at your phone? And he hands it over voluntarily. Yeah, the kid hands it over. There's no expectation of privacy so in that regard. So, so I, what else is there? Yeah, I, I've had a, a, an apartment building and I've had a couple of instances of graffiti. And um, I put up some signs like that, like video surveillance, and put up a couple of cameras. And, that maybe they don't work, but, uh, um, but my question is, I've seen less and less graffiti um, over the last couple of years. Have, have, did you catch anybody? Or, or a lot of the graffiti, I think they estimated that over 50% is gay graffiti. Um, a lot of that's been on the downward because uh, 
a lot of the people that are doing it are somewhere else. Either they're moved out of the city or they're in jail, or they've learned that when they post something up like that, we have a gang unit now that can tell you not always who they are, but know which group is working with them. And they can basically write themselves on a wall that says, hey, I did this. That's the smartest thing to do, you know what I mean? Um, so that's kind of gone down a little bit. Uh, a lot of the taggers and the other stuff it hasn't been an issue yet. Have you noticed it going down? Have yeah, they said in the, they had a press conference on the on news the other night. It said that it's gone down quite a bit in the last yeah, yeah, two or three years. Yeah. Well, once again, you know, when I, as I was telling people when I was walking the street, you put no trespassing sign up, and you see a kid over here that doesn't live here or work here. And you don't, you know that they're probably going to do it, but we can't run over there. You know, they see us, and they're on the property. That sends a message to them right away. Hey, they're going to call the cops every time I walk on this property. So I'm not going to go spray paint here. I'm going to go somewhere else. It's on the LPD website where they have a, a display or whatever of crimes that have been reported or mm -hmm. something. Okay. Yeah, but it's under the statistical summary. If you go to the uh, LPD uh, webpage, it says crime statistics. You can click on it there. Yeah. And crime mapping is also on there. Yeah, check it one time. I was surprised at the amount of activity around our house, which is yep. South Lincoln, basically. Yeah. It's, you know, people think if you live certain areas of town, you're not victims of crime, you actually. I, I always tell people, you think a criminal's going to go to the poor area of town, Bob? Yeah. I'd rather go to the rich area of town. <laughs> Thank you for the services you provide. I just had a clarification. On the pedestrian walks, it seems like people don't stop rarely. Yeah. Are you supposed to stop? Uh, pedestrian, like what are you talking about? So like, so like on 48th, uh, just south of Calvert, there's a pedestrian crosswalk. Yep. Like the sign is there. But sometimes I'll stop, but it seems like people are going the different direction walk. So it's like, I'm not sure if you're supposed to. It's at a marked intersection. It's the yeah, crosswalk it's at the intersection. Yeah, it's marked. Well, by law, you're supposed to stop before the crosswalk and let the people cross. Okay. Um, but the people also, and I don't, I don't think that one's an automatic one, but you know, you're also not supposed to cross where there's an orange hand up or anything like that. Okay. Um, you know, I always tell people, look, when you come up to an intersection like that, before you, you know, before you walk out into the middle of the street, just because you got a white, and uh, yeah. a lot of times with the sun, they can't always see that. Yeah. So I was just, it just seems like sometimes people stop, and I figured by the time I stop, somebody's going to run into me, and then they're going to say, "Why were you stopped there?" And I, I wasn't sure if there was a, you know, state law or city law. Yeah, says, yeah. state law says if there's a crosswalk, you're supposed, to, and it's at a marked intersection. Yeah, okay. you're supposed to stop before and let the people. But not like a bike path guy. Like when I think of it's like 14th and Old Cheney, there's a little bike path that crosses there. That sometimes you'll see people stopping. I'm like, that mean the other lanes stopping? And no, I, I don't know. So and really, like, welcome to the city of Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> That's the frustration we all live with, is, especially as police officers. Half will stop, half will run people over. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and there's true. a lot of people going right through yellow lights, like Highway mm -hmm. Two and yeah. 56. That's just well, scary. Well, and as construction gets worse this summer, it's only going to get worse. So it's bad. On my way here, I was, you know, construction was bad. People blowing lights right next to me. And, you know, it's just surprising. So I'm not a Mark Cruiser, so I expect that. But <laughs> just surprising how people don't care anymore. So yeah. in a hurry. Any other questions at all? Lady that was at Walmart and that guy grabbed her leg and she was like, Oh, yeah. 